Hi everyone, this is Professor M. Science, and today I want to talk about unitary operators in another one of our videos on rigorous quantum mechanics. Unitary operators are used for many different purposes in quantum mechanics. For example, spatial translations or time evolution are described by unitary operators. As another example, the symmetry operations of a Hamiltonian can be represented by a group of unitary operators. The aim of today's video is to go over the basic mathematical properties of unitary operators so we can use them confidently when we need to. Let's go! A unitary operator U is an operator whose inverse is equal to its adjoint. And the definition is as simple as that. In the rest of the video we'll explore the properties of operators that obey this relation. But before we do that, let's rewrite the definition in another way that is also typically used. Remember that the inverse of an operator is such that when we multiply them together in either order, we obtain the identity. For unitary operators, this means that u dagger u is equal to u u dagger, which is equal to the identity. This equation is a restatement of the fact that u dagger is equal to the inverse of u. The first property of unitary operators that we're going to look at is that the product of two unitary operators is also unitary. To see this, consider a unitary operator U, another unitary operator V, and the product UV. To check that UV is also unitary, we first consider UV dagger times UV. We know that the adjoint of a product of two operators is equal to the product of the adjoints in reverse order and we get v dagger u dagger u v. As u is unitary, this is the identity, and we get v dagger v. And as v is unitary, this also gives the identity. We could similarly show that u v times u v dagger is also equal to the identity, and putting these results together, we see that u v is unitary. This confirms that the product of two unitary operators is itself a unitary operator. Now I want to consider the eigenvalue equation of unitary operators. We can write it as u lambda equals lambda lambda, where as usual the lambda here is the eigenvalue and the lambda here the eigenstate. We've been working a lot with Hermitian operators in our study of quantum mechanics, and in that case the eigenvalues are real numbers. However, for a general non-Hermitian operator, like the unitary operators we're looking at today, the eigenvalues don't have to be real numbers, and in general they'll be complex numbers. To figure out the eigenvalues, let's consider the norm squared of u lambda. We can use the eigenvalue equation to write this as the norm squared of lambda lambda. We can expand the norm as the bra times the ket, remembering to take the complex conjugate of the lambda associated with the bra. Assuming that the eigenstates are normalized, then we end up with the absolute value squared of lambda. Let's now write the norm squared again. We now first expand in terms of the bra and the ket. As u is unitary, we end up with lambda lambda, which equals 1. Putting these results together, we get that the absolute value squared of lambda is equal to 1. This means that the eigenvalues of a unitary operator are numbers of magnitude 1. We can write any number of magnitude 1 as this exponential, where phi lambda is a real number. So the eigenvalues of unitary operators are in general complex numbers, but their magnitude must be equal to 1. This is quite different to what we know about the eigenvalues of Hermitian operators, which can take any value, but they must be real numbers. Still working with the eigenvalue equation, the next thing I want to show is that the eigenstates of a unitary operator that correspond to different eigenvalues are orthogonal. To do so, we start again with the eigenvalue equation of a unitary operator u. The first thing we need to show is that this implies that the bra lambda u is equal to the eigenvalue times the bra lambda. To see this, we start with the eigenstate lambda, we then insert the identity, we can write out the identity as u dagger u because u is unitary, this here is the eigenvalue equation for u, so we get lambda u dagger lambda. Using the result from the previous slide that lambda is a number of magnitude 1, we can rewrite this as the exponential of i phi lambda times u dagger lambda. We can then isolate this term, 
and get u dagger lambda equal to the exponential of minus i phi lambda times lambda. This is just the complex conjugate of the original exponential, so we can rewrite this expression as the complex conjugate of lambda times lambda. The final step is to convert this latest equation to the dual space to get this. And as usual, we got this by turning all cats into bras here and here, all scalars into their conjugates here, and all operators into their adjoints here. This completes the proof of this relation up here, and we're now ready to show that the eigenstates are orthogonal. Let's first make some room. We consider two eigenstates of u, the first lambda obeys this eigenvalue equation, and the second mu obeys this other eigenvalue equation. For the second one, we'll also make use of the corresponding equation for bras we've just derived. Okay, we're now ready for the proof. First, we calculate the bracket mu u lambda using this eigenvalue equation in this part here gives lambda mu lambda. We can write the bracket again, and now we use this expression here in this part here, and we end up with mu mu lambda. Subtracting these two equations gives that zero equals lambda minus mu times the bracket mu lambda. This means that if lambda is not equal to mu, then this bracket must be zero. And that's it. The eigenstates of a unitary operator corresponding to distinct eigenvalues are orthogonal. Up to this point, we've investigated the fundamental properties of unitary operators that follow from their definition up here. In the rest of the video, we'll look into what happens when we apply a unitary operator to a quantum state or to another operator. This process of applying a unitary operator is called a unitary transformation. A key reason why unitary operators are so important in quantum mechanics is that unitary transformations conserve the scalar product. Let's consider a ket psi1 prime equal to the action of a unitary operator u on a ket psi1. This is an example of a unitary transformation between the state psi1 and the state psi1 prime. We can do the same with another state psi2 prime, which is the unitary transformation of the state psi2. We're now ready to prove that unitary transformations conserve the scalar product. To do so, let's consider the scalar product between psi1 prime and psi2 prime. We can rewrite it in terms of the unitary transformation of the bra of psi1, remembering to take the adjoint of u when going to dual space, and then the unitary transformation of psi2. This here is now the identity operator because u is a unitary operator, and we get the bracket psi1, psi2. This confirms that the scalar product of the primed states is equal to the scalar product of the original states. Okay, this is the key why we care so much about unitary transformations in quantum mechanics. They conserve the scalar product. It immediately follows that they also conserve the norm of kets because the norm is simply the scalar product of a ket with itself. So that means that applying a unitary transformation allows us to change a state without changing its normalization. A well-known example of this is the time evolution of a quantum state, which is a process that conserves the norm and can be described by a unitary operator called the time evolution operator. We actually have a video on the time evolution operator, so if you want to learn more about it, just follow the link in the description. And before we move on, a quick aside. You're most likely familiar with orthogonal transformations in, say, a three-dimensional real vector space. Examples of orthogonal transformations include rotations or reflections about a point or a plane, and for 3D vectors, they are transformations that conserve the scalar product. In this language, unitary transformations are simply the generalization of orthogonal transformations from real to complex vector spaces. We're next going to extend unitary transformations to operators. Using a similar primed notation to the one we've used for cats, we say that the unitary transformation of an operator A is given by another operator A prime, and what we need to decide now is what we mean by unitary transformation in the case of operators. To do so, we first need to consider a basis V of state space, and also the corresponding basis V prime obtained by the unitary transformation of V. We then say that the operator A prime is a unitary transformation of the operator A if the matrix elements of A prime in the V prime basis 
are the same as the matrix elements of A in the V basis. This definition is typically rewritten in a more convenient form, and to see it, let's consider again the matrix element of A prime in the V prime basis. What we do now is to use the fact that the V prime states are the unitary transforms of the V states, and we can then spell out this matrix element as Vn u dagger A prime u Vm. Combining these two expressions, and as Vn and Vm are arbitrary basis states, then we have that A is equal to u dagger A prime u. Working with this last equation, let's first pick the left hand side and multiply from the left by u and from the right by u dagger to get this. Picking the right hand side, we can again multiply by u from the left and u dagger from the right. And as u is unitary, we have an identity here and another one here, and we end up with a prime. This is the key equation. When we build the operator a prime as equal to u a u dagger, then we say that a prime is the unitary transformation of a. Okay, this is just a definition, and I do realize that at this point it may sound somewhat abstract. However, we encounter unitary transformations of operators very often in quantum mechanics, usually in the context of symmetry, and you can find a very simple example of this in the video on even and odd operators. Let's now explore some properties of unitary transformations of operators. First, I want to show that if A is a Hermitian operator, then its unitary transformation is also Hermitian. To see this, consider A prime dagger. We can now expand A prime in terms of its unitary transformation. The adjoint of a product is the product of the adjoint in reverse order. And it is simply the definition of the unitary transformation of A dagger. Additionally, if A is Hermitian, then we can write this as the unitary transformation of A, and therefore A prime dagger is equal to A prime if A is Hermitian, confirming our original claim. Second, let's consider the nth power of the unitary transformation of A. We can write A prime in terms of A. We can now explicitly write the n terms in the power. All the terms u dagger u give the identity. And we have this u here, that we copy here. Then we have n factors of a, and then this u dagger here, which we copy here. By definition, this is simply the unitary transformation of a to the power n, and this means that the power of unitary transformation here is equal to the unitary transformation of the power here. We can do more. As functions of operators are defined through their power series, then this result implies that the unitary transformation of the function of an operator is equal to the function of the unitary transformation of the operator. And third, let's consider the eigenvalue equation under the unitary transformation. Consider an operator A with its eigenvalue equation. We now look at the action of the unitary transformation of A acting on the unitary transformation of the eigenstate. Using the definitions of unitary transformations, we can write out a prime like this and alpha prime like this. This here is now the identity and we get u a alpha. This is now the eigenvalue equation of a and we get alpha u alpha and this is the unitary transformation of alpha so we end up with alpha alpha prime. So what does this mean? If we have an eigenvalue equation for an operator a then a unitary transformation means that the eigenstates of A prime are the transformed eigenstates of A here and here, and the eigenvalues stay the same. Up to this point, we've discussed the fundamental properties of unitary operators, and we've also looked at unitary transformations of states and operators. The last thing I want to do is to discuss two useful ways of working with unitary operators. The first concerns their relation to Hermitian operators, and the second looks at infinitesimal unitary operators. Let's start with the relation between Hermitian and unitary operators. Let A be a Hermitian operator, and we now define a new operator T as equal to the exponential of I A. I now claim that this operator T is a unitary operator. To see this, consider first the adjoint of T, 
Explicitly, we get the adjoint of the exponential. Using the power series of an exponential, we can expand it like this. We can now apply the adjoint, calculating the complex conjugate of all scalars and the adjoint of all operators. And it is simply the exponential of minus i a dagger. As a is Hermitian, then it is simply the exponential of minus i a. It is now trivial to see that t dagger t equals this, and as a commutes with itself, this is simply the identity. And conversely, t t dagger equals this, which is also equal to the identity. These two relations imply that t is unitary. We often encounter this form in quantum mechanics, where a unitary operator is given by the exponential of i times a Hermitian operator, as we have up here. As an example, you can check out our video on the translation operator t alpha, which is the operator that translates a position eigenstate by an amount alpha. It is a unitary operator that has this exponential form, and the corresponding Hermitian operator is the momentum operator here. And the final thing I want to discuss is the infinitesimal unitary operator. We consider a unitary operator u that depends on a small parameter epsilon, which is a real number. We then say that u epsilon is an infinitesimal operator, and what we mean is that u epsilon tends to the identity operator as epsilon tends to zero. We can expand u epsilon in a power series with the first term being the identity, the second being epsilon times some other operator g, and so on. If we consider the adjoint operator, we can expand it in an equivalent power series, and we have epsilon rather than its conjugate here, because epsilon is real. We can now calculate u epsilon times u dagger epsilon, and using the expansions we get first the identity, then epsilon times g plus g dagger, and then the remaining terms are higher powers of epsilon. As u epsilon is unitary, then this whole series must equal the identity operator. This means that the higher order terms here must vanish, and for the first order term this means that g plus g dagger vanishes. This implies that g is equal to minus g dagger, which means that g is anti-Hermitian. It is typically convenient to define a new operator f as equal to ig. With this definition, the anti-Hermitian relation for g becomes this, which implies that f is Hermitian. This means that we can always write an infinitesimal unitary transformation like this, where the operator f is Hermitian. Conversely, this means that if we have an expression like this where f is Hermitian, then the operator u here is unitary. Again, this may seem somewhat abstract at this point, but infinitesimal unitary transformations are very useful. You can find an example of this in the video on the time evolution operator, which is a unitary operator that describes the time evolution of quantum states, and an infinitesimal time evolution is given by this expression, where the infinitesimal parameter is dt, and the Hermitian operator is the Hamiltonian. Let's finish with a quick recap. A unitary operator is an operator whose adjoint is equal to its inverse, as shown by these two equivalent relations in the top row. The eigenvalues of a unitary operator are scalars of magnitude 1, so we can write them like this. For the eigenstates, if they correspond to different eigenvalues lambda and mu, then they are orthogonal. Beyond these fundamental properties, we've then considered unitary transformations, which describe what happens when we apply unitary operators to states or to operators. The key property of unitary transformations of states is that they preserve the norm. Finally, we've discussed how we can write a unitary operator t as an exponential, where a here is a Hermitian operator, and also how we can write an infinitesimal unitary operator like this, where f here is again a Hermitian operator. This was a pretty long and mathematical video, but it is essential that we understand the properties of unitary operators. They feature in many problems, and if you want to see them in action, check out our videos on the translation operator or on the time evolution operator, both of which are unitary operators. And as always, if you like the video, please subscribe.